Hello, I am Dr. Gaston Basled, Chief of the Division of Neuropsychiatry at Brigham and Women's Hospital. Thank you for wanting to learn more about treatment for functional neurological disorder, or FND, and specifically about skills-based psychotherapy. Up until two decades ago, there was very limited evidence on what helped patients with FND. This has changed and we now have enough clinical studies that support skills-based psychotherapies as one of the most effective forms of treatment for FND. As a matter of fact, for functional seizures, the evidence is very strong that these kinds of therapies can help reduce symptoms and improve quality of life. But what is skills-based psychotherapy? These are short-term, manualized treatments that focus on the development of a specific skills. Cognitive behavioral therapy, or CBT, is the most common type of skills-based psychotherapy, and it has shown positive results in FND. Other forms of skills-based psychotherapy that derive from CBT include mindfulness-based psychotherapy and prolonged exposure for those patients with associated post-traumatic stress disorder. Both of these therapies have evidence of effectiveness in FND. Skills-based psychotherapy may be the only treatment recommended for FND in some cases, or it could be one treatment modality that will supplement other types of treatment, such as physical therapy, in the case of FND with predominantly motor symptoms. So what happens exactly during skills-based psychotherapy? I'm Laura Morrissey, clinical social worker in neuropsychiatry at Brigham and Women's. I'm one of the therapists who delivers skills-based psychotherapy for FND. FND can have a major impact on people's lives, restricting driving, work, and other activities. Relationships are often profoundly affected. One of the first steps in treatment is to clarify people's values. What really matters to them the most? We help people find things they can do despite their symptoms, and this makes people feel more themselves and connected. In treatment, the therapist and patient investigate what's going on all around the FND symptoms. What are the vulnerability factors in situations leading up to symptom exacerbations? What can be changed? Often self-care like sleep and pacing to meet life's demands can be optimized. The working hypothesis in FND treatment is that the brain developed an involuntary reaction to stress that then became automatic. For some people with FND, the idea of stress having to do with their symptoms immediately resonates. Well, for others, it doesn't ring true at all. When we think of stress in the broadest terms as anything that requires adaptation, people can come to see stress where they hadn't before. For example, even desired events like a work promotion or getting a pet are stressors in the sense of increasing demands on a person. Often there's not a single stressful event, but rather an accumulation of life challenges. Having anxiety in response to FND symptoms is common as the symptoms bring an experience of loss of control over one's body. There can be a snowball effect when anxiety in turn makes symptoms worse. First, our treatment teaches crisis survival skills. These are distraction and sensory grounding techniques used when symptoms are coming on or worsening. The skills can stop or lessen the intensity of symptoms. Next, treatment teaches relaxation techniques. These include diaphragmatic breathing, visualization, and progressive muscle relaxation. The purpose of these is to reduce baseline arousal and improve resiliency to stress. A core component of our treatment is mindfulness. Mindfulness is a practice and a series of attitudes that allow people to become more aware of their experiences. We apply mindfulness to emotions and physical sensations to be more able to recognize and accept them. We consider how helpful our thoughts and reactions are in light of our values and goals then we try out more skillful ways of responding. With practice, the brain retrains to respond with intention rather than react automatically. 
most patients find the treatment accessible and have a reduction in the frequency and intensity of their symptoms. We hope you find this explanation useful. Thanks for your attention.